Figures. Okay, so right now what we're, we're, we're doing is we're taking and doing a comparative analysis of the one that I instructed you from and a couple of other students. This one is Gabby's and who's is this? Mr. McElroy's. Okay, and so when you look at these three forms, most of you would kind of agree that um, that the very first one has a much more dynamic character than these. These two, right, look very much like this one, particularly Gabby's, right? Now the question becomes is, why is that? In answering the why is what will hopefully get you guys to learn to design the forms in a different way, okay? Because, so I'm going to turn this, I'm going to point this up at the board to capture some of our discussion. So going back to our, does that see everything up on the board? Going back to our earlier discussion back in the Polygonal Forms Project, you'll recall that we had a discussion about the proportion of an object. I'm getting rid of the little X I drew through this in our prior discussion. So two things contributed to this general sense of the, 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 the character of the object, the figure against the field, let's call it, right? So I gotta move this closer to me, because otherwise it's not gonna hear me. So stay there, all right? So the first thing was the, the ratio, right? Length to width. So the closer it is, so one to one, the more stable that the object looks. And so here, right, we see a square and a rectangle. Well, the rectangle has that longer proportion and has that, that sort of character. So the other thing that we talked about is not using 90 degree angles and not having parallel edges, right? And so here we see the use of non-parallel edges in both a elongated and a foreshortened version. So I tried to match that angle to that angle and that angle to that angle and then let the other ones sort of be what they were. And again, this, this one is combining the use of the acute and the obtuse angles, right, along with the elongation of the, of the figure to kind of create a general sense of a more dynamic form than you see here. I'm not saying that there are not conditions where you would want a more stable form. It's just that your instruction for this project is to try and create something of dynamic. So I, I did this little stupid sketch over here about which airplane would you rather fly in? Would you rather fly in the one that's got the little tiny wings or would you rather fly in the one that's got the you know, more normal wings. I could also do one that's got square wings. So we'll kind of draw a little airplane going out and it'll have square boxy wings. Okay. So of, of the three, the one that has that sort of delta winged character, right, is the third one. And again, that applies back to what we're doing here. When we analyze mine in comparison to some of the ones that were created, you notice that mine has a very strong sense of tapering and that it has an elongated proportion, right? Length to width. Whereas if we look at some of the other ones, they're much more stable. They have less angle and far less taper. Okay, so what I'm gonna ask you guys to do right now is I'm gonna ask you to take these goodies back and try to create something that is a little more dynamic than what you've got, okay? Applying the lessons of the elongation, the tapering, and the use of acute and obtuse angles. Trying to stay away from 90 degrees or, or 85 degrees, right? I guess I could, I could be formulaic and say that you have to include um, certain angles. How many minutes are we at? Four. Four? Let's, let's, let's be a little formulaic, shall we? So let's I'm gonna pull a 30 and 45, right? And let's see. So 
So that's five. That's a sixty. So let's just hypothetically say that one of your obtuse corners for your redesign of your object has to use a 60 degree turn. So or actually I think that's yeah, that's 60 degrees of included radius, right? Um, so at a minimum, one of them needs to use 60 degrees, approximately. Okay? You're going to stay away from anything that's even relatively close to a 90. Alright? The other thing I want you guys to do is I want you guys to envision the added piece. If, let, let's look at the original added piece. So the original piece is right here, correct? Would you say that that is pretty close to a one-to-one -one proportion? Yeah? Okay. This one is maybe one and a quarter to one, right? We could we could verify that by just taking this forty-five degree triangle and placing it here. Yeah, so it's not even one and a quarter to one. It's like maybe one and an eighth to one. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do is I'm going to ask you guys to produce new objects that have a proportion of eh, one and a half to one okay minimum one and a half to one okay so elongate the proportion use a use at least a, a 60 degree angle in one of your acute points so all right stop the video